McKenna got really sick one day and was out from the gym for about two weeks. And during that time, I got kind of bored and, well, slightly neurotic. So here I am, genuinely curious, what's growing on these climbing holds? And while I'm at it, I might as well swab a toilet and swab some of the gym equipment to see if there's anything like bacteria or germs or fungus or mold or anything like that growing on those pieces of equipment. I keep seeing stuff like this where there are handprints right next to footprints and it kind of grosses me out sometimes. So again, I got neurotic and ordered petri dishes and swabs off of Amazon. So I'm going to try to grow some bacteria. Here's the process. I'm going to have four dishes, one with a control, of course, where I don't swab anything. And then I'm also going to swab a toilet. Okay, yes, gross. But I think it's important to have something gross to see and compare things that we often don't think about as being gross to what we do think is gross. And for those of us who don't climb, I'm also gonna swab a barbell to compare a piece of gym equipment to a toilet and climbing holds, see which one is the grossest because people often clean the gym equipment. I see that all the time. And you're kind of supposed to wipe things down like a barbell or dumbbells after you're done. And if you're anything like me, sometimes you just forget. You get into the rhythm of a workout and don't wipe it down. And that's normal. But all I'm doing here is labeling the different Petri dishes. It's important to know which is which, of course. And if you would, take a second to like and subscribe this video. It helps me make more content like this and helps the channel more than you could ever know. I also want to disclaim that I am no expert in this field. This is the first time that I've ever done swabs like this. I haven't spent any time in a lab, so take all of this as more entertainment than information. As you can see, I'm trying to write things down with a pen, and pens don't write on stuff like this. So I had to grab a Sharpie. But despite me not being an expert in biology or bacteria or things like that, if we do grow some bacteria or mold or something gross, then at the very least, you can think to yourself, uh, maybe I should wipe down the equipment that I use, or maybe I should wear some hand sanitizer when I'm done climbing. And disclaimer, we do grow some nasty stuff. Here's just a sample of some things that we are going to grow. Gross. So now we're packed up and ready to go to the climbing gym. What are you doing? Uh, gotta make sure it's uh, sanitary, you know? <laughs> Despite my inexperience, I will still try to keep things as professional as possible or as sanitary as possible. So I do end up wearing gloves and I do switch swabs, of course. And later, I do try to isolate each of the Petri dishes. And then here is where you caught me at the intro of the video, swabbing these climbing holds. Now my thought here is that I could swab this kilter board, I could swab the regular gym, or I could swab something like the splatter board or spray board. And I thought that swabbing this kilter board here would probably result in the gnarliest thing because the normal climbing holds are usually changed. Oh, I'd say once every six months or so as they continue to rotate around the bouldering gym and switch the different routes out. But here on that kilter board, uh, they don't really clean the routes, or at least I haven't seen them clean the routes, and they don't switch out the holes. So hopefully that gives us something interesting. And then here, I know that the barbells are cleaned regularly. I do see people cleaning them, spraying them, wiping them down, and I do wonder if the staff also cleans them. But who knows, honestly. And then, this is me running to the bathroom and I'm going to swab a urinal, which also hopefully gets cleaned. But again, who really knows? On a side note, this is another reason why you shouldn't wear street shoes on the climbing wall because people walk into the bathroom and whatever's on your shoes is going to get on the climbing holds, which is then going to be grabbed by your hands. So here are the results of the Petri dishes. This is day one. And this is the toilet seat. You can notice a tiny bit of mold or something, and we'll go over what I think some of these are at the end. The packet of Petri dishes did give me a website to refer different types of bacteria, different types of growth, germs, etc. So we'll refer to that in a second. This is, of course, the control, and there's nothing growing in here, nothing at all. 
And then this is the climbing wall. And there's a couple different types of bacteria that I can identify just by looking at the different colors. Next up is of course the gym equipment. And there's not much going on here other than a tiny white puff at the bottom. Actually less puffy, kind of goopy. So then of course we move on to day two. Now it's worth noting that these are being incubated at their recommended temperatures. And here is the toilet, big puff, continuing to grow, and then some smaller puffs in the middle, still equally gross. The control is the same, nothing to report there. Now we move on to the climbing wall and the growths continue to get bigger. And then the white puff in the middle is also getting grosser. Then here at the gym equipment, there's continued growth. I notice a white puff, a white glob, and then in the upper right corner, there is kind of a darker glob. Now here, of course, is day three. Right. Toilet, continued bigger, big old puff. I'm really curious to see what this is, and I'd love to talk to an expert about what their opinions are. Besides the big puff, there's not really much else going on in this. That might be because they clean toilets. Control remains the same. Nothing going on that I can see. It would also be interesting to take these things to a microscope if that's possible. And then the climbing wall. Now here's where some things get interesting. The yellow globs are emitting a slightly foul odor. And the big puff in the middle is getting bigger and it's fuzzier and furrier and then the gym equipment the top right puff is getting darker and then there's a blue puff at the bottom that has grown quite rapidly through the night i had originally planned to do five days of bacteria growing but we are going to stop at three because i'm starting to get grossed out by this and it's not really normal to grow bacteria in your apartment so i'm gonna go ahead and get rid of it now let's be honest I didn't do everything textbook and I completely acknowledge that, but we did what we needed to accomplish. And that is knowing that there are some nasty things growing on gym equipment and especially climbing holds. One of the things that I learned is that it's really hard to identify bacteria unless I were to send it into a lab. So if you were an expert in some of these things, drop in the comments what you think is growing in those Petri dishes. Also drop some different comments about some suggestions of how to stay clean and how to have proper hygiene when you are climbing. Pretty much all I do is wash hands before and wash hands after. But obviously not everybody does that. So how do you continue to stay hygienic when other people are not? It's a really difficult question, but at the very least, you should throw some hand sanitizer in your chalk bag, continue to wash your hands and continue to stay healthy. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. If you drop a like and subscribe, comment below. It means a lot. Take care.